Joining me now, Dr. Carson, former director of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital and the author of One Nation, What We Can All Do to Save America's Future. Doctor, good to see you again tonight. Thanks for being here. So already those who, who love you say that you were a rock star and those who don't love you are harping on one comment that you made about what now is a famous case where um, the, a gay couple wanted a baker to make a cake for the wedding. The baker said, no, we don't believe in gay marriage. The lawsuit came and you made this point for which you're now getting hit. Watch. They can go right down the street and buy a cake. But no, let's bring a suit against this person because I want them to make my cake even though they don't believe in it, which is really not all that smart because they might put poison in your cake. Now some are claiming you're suggesting that gays who complain about what they view as discrimination risk getting poisoned. You know, that would be a very immature interpretation of what is a, a, a common saying, never make your waiter or your chef angry because you don't know what they're going to put in your food. You know, uh, people who look for something like that to make an issue out of really don't have much of an issue. So I guess that's rather comforting. You know, this is sort of a, a strain of criticism that comes up when it comes to Dr. Carson. They say, okay, he is going to fire up the base and folks at, you know, the Iowa Summit are going to love him. But how is he ever going to appeal to those center right and center left Americans that he needs to in order to actually win this election? Well, you know, I see a lot of those uh, center right and center left uh, people every day. I saw a bunch of them tonight. I'll see a bunch of them tomorrow. And uh, they seem to understand exactly what I'm talking about. And that's why I keep talking, because we have got to wake our country up. And we've got to stop being afraid of those people who sit around and call you names and criticize mm -hmm. and let that stifle you and, and keep you from telling the truth. How did you, when you heard the other... Uh you know, speakers at this event, and and I should tell the viewers that uh, Romney wasn't there, Bush wasn't there, Rubio wasn't there, a couple of weren't there. But when you heard the other speakers, how did you feel like your message differed? Uh, well, I don't actually go around uh, trying to compare myself with others and trying to de determine whether uh, there's a substantial difference. I do make it clear that I'm not a politician and that I never intend to become a politician. Even if I'm elected to office, I'm not going to be a politician because they tend to do things that are politically expedient. And I'm much rather to do things that are correct. Mm -hmm. if, if you... Those are the things that the American people are looking for. If, if, you, if it's not you, if it's not going to be you who gets nominated for this GOP field, who would you like it to be? Well, I would like it to be somebody who puts the Constitution on the top shelf who doesn't pick and choose the laws that they want to enforce, somebody who understands the economy and understands how to get it moving, someone who understands the real meaning of compassion and how we actually invest in our fellow human beings and provide them with a ladder to actually achieve and not just to stay in a dependent position and someone who knows how to lead on the world stage because, you know, that vacuum is extraordinarily dangerous to us in the long run. You may not be a politician, but you are, you are good. You are nimble like a politician is. Doctor, great to see you again. Congratulations <laughs> on what they said was a great performance in Iowa.